So today we have a new guest on the show. His name is Rajiv Masan. He is a film critic. I have been following his work for the last 15 years, and you must have seen his show now showing. Uh, so I am a big fan, and it's a privilege to have him on the show. So over to Rajiv for a few movie recommendations. So I'm going to recommend a few films that I love deeply. Um, but how do you recommend just four and five films when you spent half your life watching films? I thought I'd choose a theme, um, and the theme that I've chosen is loneliness or isolation. The first film I'm going to recommend today is Somewhere by Sofia Coppola. Um, it was made in the year 2010, um, and it's really one of my favorite films because it represents the theme of, of loneliness in a very interesting manner. What's very important is the setting. Um, I think in films about isolation and loneliness, you'll notice that setting and, and, and location is, is crucial. And in this case, um, the location is the Chateau Marmont, which is uh, one of the most exclusive hotels in Los Angeles in Hollywood. Um, the story is about this movie star, Johnny, uh, Johnny Marco, that Stephen Dorff plays. He's moved into the Chateau Marmont. If you've been to Los Angeles, you'll see it's one of those hotels that not everyone um, has access to. It's the place where uh, movie stars and famous people go to just to genuinely hide from the public. He is uh, at that stage in his life where he's obviously very lonely. He's separated, he has a young daughter who comes to live with him, but he's spending his days mostly just smoking or drinking and having sex with whatever woman shows up and, and, and pretty much throws herself at him. And you can see that uh, this is, is loneliness. It, you know, Sofia Coppola is Hollywood royalty. She's the daughter of Francis Ford Coppola. She knows this world. She knows the world of movie stars. She knows what goes on in their heads and hearts. Um, it's interesting because he's in Hollywood, which is the most glamorous city in the world. He's in a hotel that's buzzing with, with activity and with movie stars. And yet he's in a very lonely place in his own head and heart. Uh, there, are, there are long patches. In fact, the opening scene is beautiful because it's this, it's this shot of a Ferrari that's just going around in circles. And that's representative of where he is in his life. Is he bored? Is he lonely? Uh, possibly all of those things. There's another shot in the film, there's another scene in the film, uh, which also you know, symbolizes the, the, the loneliness that he feels. Um, he has to go into a, uh, to a studio to, to do a mold of his face because he's, he's going to be playing an older character, an older person, and um, they put the plaster on him. Uh, and his entire face is covered in plaster, except for his nostrils, because that's what he needs to breathe. And they leave him because they, you know, the technicians go off to do the, uh, whatever else they need to do. And he's just in the room with plaster on him, eyes covered, mouth covered, only nostrils. And the camera very, very, very slowly kind of, you know, moves closer and closer. Also, I, I, what I enjoyed about this film is, you know, you can see some sort of ideas uh, very, very close to Lost in Translation, the film that Sofia Coppola made. Um, there is this bit where he goes to Italy because he's going to be uh, receiving an award and he's sitting in a, in a crowded auditorium and they're all talking in Italian and he doesn't understand it. Uh, and, and you can see his expression, he's trying to be polite and smile. But it's all of these things, you know, to be, um, to be among millions and hundreds and thousands of people and still to be all alone. The only time that loneliness is sort of broken is when he's with his 11 year old daughter uh, Chloe that's played by Elle Fanning and she's she's a lovely uh, young actress because she's so perceptive it's just her face she doesn't say a lot in fact that's true of the entire film there's not a lot of dialogue uh, so much of it is just um, is just what you watch there are long chunks where he's just smoking or he's just drinking or he's eating spaghetti that he's cooked himself in, in, in the room it's the kind of film that a lot of people would immediately say this is a slow film but I think the beauty is in the slowness the second film I want to talk about is Lars and the Real Girl. Lars and the Real Girl is a 2007 film uh, that stars Ryan Gosling. Again, what's very important to note right away is the setting, is the location. It's one of those close-knit communities where everyone knows everyone. The story is about Lars. He's the protagonist, uh, this 27-year-old this man that Ryan Gosling plays. He's a loner. Um, when we meet him initially, you realize he's someone who's, who's socially awkward, who, who really d wants to be uh, by himself. He's someone who chooses to be by himself. He lives in the garage um, that is just by the home that his brother and his sister-in-law live in and they and they love him. His sister-in-law is played by Emily Mortimer and she's lovely and she wants to spend more time with him and they keep calling him home for breakfast and for dinner but he but he's not comfortable. He's just he would just rather be alone and he lives in that garage. Um, we see that he goes to work uh, but he's not particularly um, you wouldn't say he has friends. At one point, uh, soon, soon, a, a box arrives, a big, a big box arrives by delivery. And that evening he comes home, uh, he comes to his brother's house and he tells them that I've got a visitor and, um, and they're very excited because it seems like, like he's, he's finally ready to engage. And that's when you first meet Bianca. 
and Bianca is a rubber doll. She's a she's a she's what a male order doll. What you know what most men uh, order for for sexual purposes. She's a sex doll or a love doll, and. Um, and that scene, that 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 first scene where they're where he's sitting there with that doll in very provocative clothes. She's dressed in very provocative clothes because that's how she comes. Uh, she's been delivered, and um, and she's sitting there on the sofa because he's brought her. And just that image of his brother and his sister-in-law in utter disbelief, looking there and um, and watching him go about his business. I think it's the first time that you realize that that this is a man who's disturbed. He's clearly, um, you know, he he clearly has mental health issues. That's the first time you you realize it, and that's the first time that they articulate it, the, the brother and the sister-in-law. Um, and what's really beautiful about this film is that, of course, that stems from loneliness. Of course, that stems from, um, you know, from, from, I wouldn't say outcast because he chooses to be, uh, um, you know, outside of the uh, social circle. But but it it comes from a place of loneliness. And later we discover that the loneliness comes from comes from childhood, not trauma, but childhood experiences. But what's really beautiful about this film is how um, that community. First, of course, how his his brother and his sister-in-law sort of. Um, embrace embrace him with that uh, with that girlfriend with Bianca. How they treat her like a human being for his sake because they love him, um, and how the how the community uh, you know eventually sort of. Em, em, you know, embraces her and um, and accepts her as as a, as a human, and it's beautiful because you realize the extent that one will go to for the sake of people that one loves. It's really a beautiful film uh, that that makes you f wish that the world was in fact so kind and gentle and empathetic. Alas, it's not. The third film I'm going to talk about is a film I suppose everyone has watched. Um, it's Revolutionary Road, which was directed by Sam Mendes um, in the year 2008. It's got. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet playing a suburban couple, suburban American couple, The Wheelers. This is a film that's not on, um, you know, immediately you wouldn't say this is a film about loneliness, but it is about loneliness in a marriage, certainly from her point of view, and that's why I've picked it. The story is, of course, about this couple, about eight or nine years into the marriage, and we see that the marriage has decayed, we see that their lives have not come apart, but their lives have cer are certainly strained. This is such a relatable film because um, this couple finds themselves at a place in their lives that they didn't expect to be. They they both you know both of them thought they'd be in different place in their lives that they'd be doing something different. They'd be much uh, you know they, they'd be doing something that they much more enjoyed. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio plays Frank Wheeler. He's working in a in a job in the city uh, it, it, selling machines. It's the job that he vowed he wouldn't take because his father worked for the same company. Um, so he is clearly detached he's someone who's immersing himself in drink and um you know casual sex he 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 hooks up with a with, with someone from the typing pool in the office this is the 50s i think it's set in um and meanwhile there's kate winslet and hers is the track that i find uh, really fascinating because she's a woman who's um you know who's who's at home, uh, and she's both uh, she's lonely both literally and metaphorically because uh, he's away most of the day working in the city. Um, she's alone at home. There's a beautiful scene where she takes the trash out and she she crosses the road to take the trash out and she looks at their home, and and there's a flashback to the time that they first came to look at the home and they first uh, sort of set their hearts on buying this home. And that was a very different time because because they had this dream and they you know that for at that time buying that house was the was the most important thing it represented hope it represented love but all these years later as she's taking the trash out um, she looks at that home and and you can see that she's in a lonely place again both literally but also because she feels alone in this marriage he's clearly um, you know too busy too disconnected and we know because we see what's going on in his life simultaneously uh, but I, I think it's it's one of those absolutely incredible films about the breakdown of a relationship about the the, the breakdown of a marriage uh, and again um, you see you see the loneliness in the second half of the film when she makes that crucial decision i'm not going to give away but she she makes a very crucial decision later on which which of course impacts the end of the film um, and you realize just where she is uh, you know as she just where she was in her head and in her heart. I absolutely love Revolutionary Road. It's a it's a film that really takes a piece out of you. I don't know what it is about uh, about films about loneliness uh, that I that I'm instantly drawn to. But I, I find that characters that are in that place are just fascinating characters because um, to be in the modern world or or you know at any any point. I mean the, the world is populated and to be around people and, and yet to feel so disconnected. Um, 
it, it you know it's 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 heartbreaking and it's it just makes for very very uh, compelling viewing. The fourth film I want to talk about um, is a film that's not actually about loneliness, um, but I'll tell you why I still think it fits with the theme. Um, it's a film called Away We Go, which has also been directed by Sam Mendes. I think it was directed the year right after Revolutionary Road, which is interesting because um, as cynical and as heartbreaking as that film was, this is life affirming. This is a film about a about a young couple. They're in their early 30s. They're played by John Krasinski and Maya Rudolph. Uh, they're a young couple who are expecting their first baby. Um, they live in a small town. Um, it, it's a it's a cold small town. Um, I don't think we ever learn where, but they live close to his parents because um, they, they, when when they realize uh, that they're going to have a baby, they they, they feel that this is the best. You know, it, it'll be nice to have the grandparents' influence. Um, and then they discover early on that uh, the grandparents actually have planned to move. They're moving to uh, Antwerp, and uh, and now and now their plan to to have the grandparents' influence on their first child is not going to be there. So now they decide that um, that that we need to we need to find the right place to raise the baby. So it's about actually. Um, not raising their child in loneliness and isolation. They have the option to raise the child where they live. Uh, and it's interesting because these are two characters, these, these are two people who are, um, you know, they're, they're happy-go-lucky, they're young, they don't have a lot of money, they work in jobs which doesn't require them to go to the office, they work from their homes. Uh, all they really have is, is each other and love. Uh, they don't have a lot of money. At one point, they, uh, you know, she asks, are we a couple of fuck-ups? Uh, because because they have this sort of ramshackle house, and and, and she says at one point that you know our, our window is is has been taped with cardboard or with uh, or with or with um, some paper, and you realize that they're really uh, they're really young bohemian kind of uh, people. But when the when a couple, but when the kid is arriving, they realize that that is something, and especially him, he's someone who wants to. Both of them want to give the child, uh, want to raise the child in the best place possible uh, around the best influences. I, I really, really, really enjoyed uh, Away We Go. And it's, it's really interesting because Sam Mendes made it the year after uh, Revolutionary Road, which in fact was, um, you know, after shortly after Revolutionary Road, Sam Mendes' own marriage to Kate Winslet broke up. Uh, you know, and it, and it talks about, um, you know, Sam Mendes was married to Kate Winslet and, and then he made this sort of life-affirming film. It's, they're, they're both sort of opposite sides of, uh, of the coin because one is a film about the breakdown of a marriage and one is a film about, uh, you know, marriage being strengthened by this uh, um, impending baby. Um, really incredible film and the jury's out on which one's better. I used to love Away We Go and I used to feel that Away We Go is a much more underrated film and that I love it a lot more than Revolutionary Road. But then, you know, uh, you, you change and, and you grow up and you look at films differently. And for this for this podcast, I watched all these films again. Um, and I have to say, I'm going to go back and say, I, I, I think Revolutionary Road is the uh, is the one that takes a piece out of you. It really is the one that's, that, that's a stronger film. Um, uh, and that's the one that broke my heart. The fifth and the last film that I'm going to talk to you about um, and, and going with the theme of loneliness is one of my favorite films. Um, and I think it's only fair to pick an Indian film. Um, the film I want to talk to you about is a Marathi film called Killa. Killa has been directed by Avinash Arun. It was made in the year 2015. Uh, and it's just one of those incredible films. I remember when I reviewed the film, uh, I gave it five out of five because I just, I, I can't remember a film that, that, that just is so evocative. And it's a film that... That, that you completely kind of submit yourself to. Um, it's the story of a young boy who, who moves with his mother uh, from Pune to a small town um, on the Konkan, in the Konkan region, a coastal town in the Konkan region because his mother has been transferred and he has to, to move with her. But it's a very small town. He's moved from a city like Pune, which is a, which is a big city compared to the small town. And um, he's also someone who's, who's recovering from or, or sort of still, still struggling to come to terms with the death of his father a year ago, his father died. So it's a it's a tricky time for a for a young boy. He's only eleven. Um, he has to go to a new school. He has to adjust to new surroundings, and he's just not able to adjust. And I think that's something that a lot of us can relate to and understand. And um, uh, you know that feeling of walking into a classroom um, and and being completely petrified because you don't know anybody and you're and you're feeling like you're being judged. That's something that anybody can relate to. He doesn't know a single person in that in that class and he doesn't want to go to that school and he's he's acting out uh, you know against he he snaps at his mother you know repeatedly he's he he complains about her cooking he he he's rude to the neighbors he's just someone who doesn't want that life he's he's he wants to reject that life but he understands that that it's something that's uh, that's inescapable that's that's the life he has they have to have because his mother's been transferred um, and and you see uh, you know on the side the 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 
the challenges that she's facing. Amruta Subhash plays the mother and she's such a fine actor, uh, has to do so little to convey so much. Uh, and um, the actor is uh, Archit Deodhar, who's just, I mean, he, 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 would, he was much younger, of course, I would imagine, when this film came out. Again, such a mature performance. You know, someone who's far more mature than his age. You see how he's struggling to um, to sort of fit in. You see how he's uh, bristling against uh, against uh, you know his mother, against against what he has to do. And then you and then you watch how um, his life changes when he does make friends. You know. The thing about movies, and I really believe that, sometimes you don't remember films if you watch them a long time ago. I certainly don't. I, I, I'm getting old very fast. What I remember is how a film made me feel. Um, and I think that that's how I remember what I, what, you know, how much I love a film or not. It, 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 I remember how it made me feel and I remember walking out of Killa feeling just completely overwhelmed um, because I felt like I'd seen something very, very honest and very, very real. Uh, it, it didn't feel like there was a single false note. There was nothing that was done for for film, for the camera. This was a film that I remember make, ma made me feel pretty much the same way that Uran did, which is another film about uh, about loneliness and isolation. Uh, Uran is one of my favorite films ever. Um, the feeling of that young boy who's thrown out of, of his boarding school and he goes back to his father's home and discovers that he has a young brother, but you know everything about Uran. I don't need to talk about Uran. It's 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 another film. These are two films, uh, Uran and Killa, that that I, I remember distinctly. The feeling um, of of when I left that cinema and feeling like I had just come away seeing something special. Um, it's one of those films that stayed with me much much longer. Um, I, I I sometimes wonder what it is about about isolation and loneliness uh, that that draws me into it. But I think that um, it's what's not said. It's 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 a feeling, and I think that. Um, a lot of films say a lot, and, and it's beautiful when, I mean, I, I find it really interesting when the film draws me in just purely based on a feeling, on an emotion. Um, and, and that's why I picked these five films on the theme of loneliness and isolation. I love what's happening at Chalchitra Talks. I love the YouTube channel because I think that it's just such an interesting, it, it, it's such a huge service to anyone that loves the movies. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the times I may have watched some of the films that are being recommended either by Webhav or by uh, some of the guests, but, but it's about watching, it's about looking at a film and, and re-looking at a film through the eyes of the person that's, that's talking about them and through the eyes of the person for whom it has meant so much. Uh, and for that reason, I think that what Chalchitra Talks is doing is incredible, more power. Uh, I, I'm, I know that I'm, I'm a fan for life.